Greetings my fellow YouTubers and true believers out there. This here's the big D. Back with number 15 in my MCU reviews. With just a couple more days to go for Avengers Endgame, which I am happy to report has already reached certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I have a feeling that was going to happen sooner or later. Congrats. You deserved it. <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about because I'm a ways from doing that one. Here we go with my review of the first movie from 2017. This was when we got three big tiles from Marvel. So here it is, my review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now James Gunn, who directed the first film, returned, although I was rather disappointed he was dropped recently, but was soon brought back to helm a third one. I've been hearing he may even direct THE Suicide Squad, the follow-up to the 2016 Suicide, Suicide Squad movie. <laughs> And, of course, he's also producing the superhero horror flick Brightburn, which that opens next month. Unfortunately, I think that's opening due to the new Atlanta movie, which, sorry to disappoint y'all, pass. Forget that one. That I'd say that's not worth your money. But enough about that. Another thing I want to point out before I do my review... James Gunn actually was one of the writers for a video game I happen to have, and it is the hack and slash game Lollipop Chainsaw. I'll talk about that when I review the game someday. I don't know when, but I'll do it. Okay? Alright, now to the review. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 opened up just as cool as its predecessor. We do get to see a little bit of a flashback to when Peter Quill's with his folks. And now we go to the present day where he and his gang are in action. And we're hearing Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. They're known to us as Electric Light Orchestra. Loves some of their music. We also get to hear all sorts of songs. We get everybody back. We got Star Lord, Peter Quill. That's Chris Pratt. Zoe Saldana as, excuse me, Gamora. We got... De Bautista as Drax, the des Destroyer. I think I called him Dax last time. I do a I am sorry for that. My mistake, y'all. If I did, sorry. We have Vin Diesel doing this. I'm a baby Groot. And, of course, we couldn't have this without Bradley Cooper. Once again, voicing Rocket Raccoon, who, believe me, is more cooler in this than the first. Actually, come to think of it, he was calling both of those. <laughs> we also have all the other characters back. Some I forgot to mention on the last review. Like, Yonko, I... Oh, dude, that did slip, name slip my mind up. I do apologize for that. We also have Nebula back, who I learned was adopted by Thanos. Yes. I'm sorry, I never mentioned him when I reviewed the Avengers because I did see him in the mid credits scene. Which I have a feeling we would be seeing more of him. We actually did. We got to hear him voiced by Josh Brolin. But. And. Well, we got some more additional characters. We got Mantis, who really is very funny. I mean, she gets to are well attracted to Drax and and we have Eon who is played by legendary actor Kurt Russell great actor and well the action the special effects were pretty cool although critics were kind of a little picky on some of this I still thought it was just as good as its predecessor. Not only that, it had great music as well. Among some of the good songs we heard included, let me see, I can remember some. Well, aside from Mr. Blue Sky, we actually got to hear, see, Come a Little Bit Closer by Jay and the Americans. I, 
which I think was the first time I heard that old classic. Now, I'm more familiar with the country version from the late 70s, which was done by country singer Johnny Duncan, may he rest in peace, along with a little help from Jane Fricky before she even became a big star in the 80s. Now, I know, a surprise, believe me, I'm about the best there is to know about this. And speaking of country, there was also Siren Nights by the late great Glenn Campbell, whom we sadly lost a few months after the movie came out. And that was really cool seeing, well, well hearing that song and seeing Rocket in action, which that was really cool. And, well, again, forgot his name, his name slipped my mind, the blue skin dude. I believe me, his, his animatic scene was totally cool when they were playing Come a Little Bit Closer. That was super fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. But I gotta say, I really liked the in credit and post credit. Well, let me rephrase that. The mid credit and in credit scenes, post credit. Well, we actually get to see another Guardians member, Cosmo, the the space dog. I actually read he has appeared in the comics before. And to my surprise, when I saw him in the first one, which this was a bit of a shock, Howard the Duck. Yeah, I'm thinking you might remember that character, one of the most, one which was considered one of the worst Marvel movies ever. I do have that movie, but I haven't watched it in a while. I do think that's a bit underrated, though, but, well, I have some respect for Howard the Duck, okay? So, please don't hate me for that. Even so, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, while it does have a few ups and downs, more ups than downs. I think it's really super cool. I look forward to seeing... Volume 3, when it comes around, I don't know when it's coming, I think, either next year or 2021. We'll just have to wait and see. And that's going to do it. But I will say, please feel free to check it, that this movie out. You won't be disappointed much. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If any of you YouTubers would... Come and check out my channel because I'm about the best there is to know about entertainment, okay? Even though I might forget some things, but hey, it's no prob. And also, you can also be prepared for more reviews. Later on, I'm going to review two of the Space Dream movies I do have in my collection, and I'll be reviewing these later on. Next will be Spider Man Homecoming. And then after that will be Thor Ragnarok. So until next time, true believers, this is the Big D saying Excelsior!